What's up, y'all? This is your girl, Miss Cotton. This is your wear it on wheels, see the real pink. Got my thug life shirt on, yeah, in case you didn't know. But, uh, anyway, I just wanted to, um, I just wanted to share my word on wheels. What's hilarious is that I drove all the way to work talking and wasn't recording nothing. You hear me? I didn't record a thing. And uh, sometimes things happen for a reason. So God was like, scrap that. Okay. So I wanted to touch on what I didn't get to talk about um, on Monday because I was driving in the rain and I was sharing a revelation about me driving in, in the rain of something that I have been afraid to do for a long time. But um, when I went to visit my father's church, his pastor was preaching and he preached from the chapter, he preached from the book of John chapter 9. He actually started at the 35th verse, but the story was so intriguing I had to go back a little bit. And the story, uh, you know, it's about God healing a man who was blind from birth and usually back in those biblical days when someone has uh is stricken with something like that then it got to be something that they did they had to sin to to be stricken with that but this man was blind from birth so you know then they were uh you know they were trying to say that it was something that the parents did it's the sins of the parents so somebody had to do something for this baby to be blind at birth when Jesus broke it down and simply said, maybe, he didn't say maybe, but this was done so that his father's work could be done, you know, uh, so that he could be healed in front of everybody. And when Jesus healed this man, honey, let me tell you something, this unconventional healing that he did, Jesus spit off his clay and wiped it on the man's eyes. And it's a good thing that the man couldn't see. Because just imagine if the man could see and Jesus was spitting in some clay to put put on him for something. Yeah, hey, what you doing? No, don't put no spit on me. Where the, all that? Where the, no, don't put no spit on me. But he was blind. He had blind faith, literally. As he stood there, he didn't know what Jesus got. I'm sure he heard something go. And he was probably like, oh, Lord, what's about to go down? But. Jesus put that clay on his eyes and he had the man to walk to the pool of Siloam. I hope I'm saying it right. And you know, a, a lot of people would be like, why didn't Jesus just heal this, just touch him and heal him on the spot? Why did he make a blind man walk to a pool to wipe the clay off to complete his healing? Well, it's all a lesson in faith. It's all a lesson in Letting God's wonder be done and so that all can see. Because you, you got to imagine as he went on his walk to this pool, people was on the side of him saying, why you got clay over your eyes? Why did you get healed on the Sabbath? Ain't nobody supposed to be getting healed on the Sabbath. Who who, who did this to you? You know, <laughs> you ain't you still going to be blind when you wipe that clay off your eyes. You know it was all kind of stuff being said to him. But he kept on walking to that pool. He went to that pool to wipe that clay off. And sure enough, he could see. And you know, God brought light to this man spiritually and physically. He brought light to him physically because now he could see. But he brought it to him spiritually because this man was able to experience the true healing of God. He was blind from birth. And y'all, that sermon right there, it really resonated in my spirit. It's no coincidence I heard that sermon on the year anniversary of me being completely healed from the lupus because, you know, I went through the same thing. I went through the same thing that the blind man went through. You know, people asking me questions about me having lupus, you know, and, and people thinking, well, she must have did something wrong to not be able to walk no more. She must have been doing all that twerking and the Lord took the facility of her limbs from her. Well, I had been having lupus since I was 11 years old. And I don't think I did anything as an 11 year old child to, uh, to bring about lupus. Um, it was done to bring glory to God's name, to show his true healing power. And I am so honored that he used me. 
even though at the time all those nights I was sick in my bed and couldn't walk, walk watching people just get up and walk on their own dancing moving and, and I couldn't do any of that I didn't understand what was going on I used to ask God why me I'm a good person I love everybody I don't do nobody wrong why would you strike me with something like that but as I you know went through that chapter and I was listening to the sermon I'm like I feel honored because not only did I persevere through all that, because I didn't get a diagnosis until 2010. So I had been going all my life with all these little aches, pain, low blood, skin, uh, uh, lesions on my skin, you know, joint pain, you know, all that stuff right there. I didn't know I had lupus. And it's, it's like once I got a diagnosis, all hell broke loose. I, I, I literally rolled over out the bed to walk and fell to the floor because I couldn't support myself anymore. And, you know, all, all that time I was just like, God, what am I supposed to learn from this? What did I do to deserve this? I didn't do anything to deserve this. But I, <laughs> I'm honored that I was able to go through that. And I thank God for giving me the the strength and perseverance that he gave the blind man as he was walking to that pool with the clay on his eyes amidst all the naysayers, what people were saying, because trust me, this, this is the timeline. When I went to church on July the 2nd, I was prayed for uh, by an African prophet. And his method uh, probably would not have uh, went well with, with any other person, any other church. As a matter of fact, while he was praying for me, I was out cold because I probably would have pushed him off of me because when I went back and watched the video, you know, uh, the last thing I remember is him telling me, don't look at him as man, look into his eyes like I'm searching for God. And when I did that, I didn't remember anything else. When I watched the video, this man covered me with his whole robe and he literally climbed over my body from top to bottom like a lion praying for me and my mama she was standing on the side of me but he waved his hand and she was out she was out during the whole thing too because my mama would have pulled him up off me just like that was good that man could see Jesus hot to him getting ready to put that clay on his eye because he probably would have objected but as God was doing his work on me in front of everybody, I was going through, you know, my my healing process while he was praying for me on the floor. I got up off the floor and I was running. I was running unassisted from anybody. But my healing was not complete because first he told me to go to the doctor's office and to get my uh, blood work drawn again because I no longer had lupus and I believed him. The second thing he told me, I had to give up that thing that I loved, that my flesh loved the most. My flesh loved doing nasty, grunchy, uh, vulgar comedy, getting sloppy drunk at Legends every Tuesday. I gave it up immediately. The next, that, that, that Tuesday, after that Sunday, I went up there and I, I stopped the show. And, and the third thing um, that, that I had to do was practice faith. In this whole thing because before I got the call back from the doctor's office I was already telling people I was healed from lupus I got the call on August the 26th I believe I got the call from the doctor's office on August the 26th with them telling me that I was healed from lupus and um, that was one of the most beautiful days of my life and it all came together when it answered the question why me because God knew I was strong enough to handle it God knew I had a mouthpiece God knew if he miraculously healed me from a uh, incurable disease that the doctors still scratching their head like the Pharisees and the Sadducees how did this happen wait a minute what did you do to get rid of the lupus they couldn't argue with it they were trying to use their scientific minds and could not all they could put in my medical records is that the patient started getting more involved in her religion and relied on her faith. That's all they could say. And and, and they put me out the office like they put, put the boy out the temple. They ain't want nothing else to do with him. Let me tell you something. Even when man puts you out, God can always find you. 
wherever you at. And and they, I mean, them doctors, them rheumatologists still mad at me. They test me every six months. I'm going on three years. They still call me up there and test me every six months and still interrogate me like they did that blind man. What did you do to get rid of the lupus? And I keep telling, read my medical records because the same answer still stands. I thank God that he used me as an awesome tool to show that miracles still happen in this day and age, that God is real and he does answer prayers and he answers them in his own timing because he has a reason and a cause for everything. No, nobody deserves to be ill from anything. But you better believe if you're going through, if you're going through anything, illness, mental illness, depression, or whatever, it's for a purpose. The purpose is to bring glory to God's name once you come out of that. And so while you're waiting for God to complete what he's trying to show the world, do it with a spirit of graciousness. Do it with the spirit of not complaining. And man, I got to give a shout out. It's sad, but it's, it's exhilarating to see my friend Coquise, Sean, Stefan, uh, Jazz. Uh, who else is, is just really fighting right now? Uh, Ann. You know, um, I had a brain fart. Y'all forgive me if I didn't say your name. But just to watch these sisters in the midst of what they going through, handle it with grace, man. That's what God wants. And even while people standing on the sideline saying, she ain't going to be healed. She doing all this time. I believe, I believe God. And she not going to be healed. He not going to be healed. They not going to be healed. They not going to change. Just keep doing what you're doing. Don't ever let the enemy shut you up. You keep on sharing your, your journey. Uh, keep sharing truth. Anybody who has anything to say about you sharing anything that's positive and it's the truth, it's come from the enemy. I don't care if they sit right next to you on a church pew every Sunday. It comes from the enemy. If they have anything negative to say about you sharing your journey, because what's, what's going to happen as you chronicle your journey and God heals you from this stuff, you got something to look back on. Because uh, back when I had lupus, I had people saying, why you always got to talk about what you're going through with the lupus? Why you always got to? Because now I got videos. Now I got videos of me speaking about my illness so that the world could see, yes, I did have the illness. Now I have videos of me walking on my cave. Now I have videos of me saying that I was going to be healed from the lupus, that I was not going to accept the lupus. And now I have videos just like this of me talking about how I was completely healed from lupus, where my blood work returned back to normal as if I never had lupus. No, I didn't deserve it. But I thank God that he chose me to show his power just like he did that blind man. This was a long word on wheels, but honey, I got the boss. I don't know what happened. Something jumped on me in this car. Well, anyway, y'all have an awesome day. This has been your word on wheels. Peace.